Thank you, Sylvia. And Marianne, I now need you to blend these spices. Thank you, girls. Oh, hello. Today at Audley End House, we're making curry. Curries are commonly eaten in middle-class houses, but occasionally I cook them here for Lord and Lady Braybrook especially since it's been referred in the newspapers that Queen Victoria, now she's Empress of India, is partial to curry. There's a rumour that she may even employ some Indian cooks in her royal household. For this curry, you will need some meat, spices for the curry powder, salt, flour, onions, a lemon, cucumber and an apple. As I'm cooking for Lord and Lady Braybrook, I am using fresh meat, as opposed to yesterday's cold meat. The recipe calls for beef, veal or mutton. Today I'm using beef, which I need to cut into cubes. Next, you need to rub the meat into a mix of flour, salt and your curry powder. Now this is done, you can fry your chopped onions. Fry your onions until they're golden brown. The recipe says you can add shallots or garlic. Lord and Lady Braybrook don't like either. Once they're done, remove them from the heat. Oh, that's coming along nicely. Once the meat is browned, it's time to mix it in the stew pan with your onions. You can, if you want, drain away the butter. I'm not. Add enough boiling water to cover it all, and then let it stew for an hour and a half, or more, depending on what meat you've used. You can add apple or cucumber, or any vegetable. Make sure your apples have been peeled and cored, and your cucumber peeled and de-seeded. Now that that's stewed down nicely, as my apple was a little sweet, I'm going to add some lemon juice. A little coriander. And it's ready to go up to the top table. There we have it, an Indian curry suitable for Lord and Lady Braybrook.